Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are looking forward to learn and understand the fundamental concepts of software testing. And as a part of today's tutorial, we are getting started with our last chapter, which is chapter eight, talking about the various other types of testing like quality characteristics testing. And as a part of this chapter, we'll be understanding different other non-functional all quality characteristics based testing, for example, usability, accessibility, performance, security, interoperability, portability, API testing, etc. So today as this a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be stepping into the very first segment of it, which is 8.1 usability testing and let's understand what aspect makes a usability of the system and how do we evaluate the user friendliness of a system. In order to talk about usability, usability is another aspect or quality characteristics of any application or system which helps an end user interact with it without any problem or without any challenges. But usability is just not limited to making it comfortable to them. It all starts with the understanding of what kind of audience is intended to use your product because at any point a product can be user friendly to you but may not be user friendly to me. In that context we can just can't say that how to define user friendliness in a particular product or a system. So the usability is basically is all about specifying or acting as a moderator working with the users to understand what exactly they would need to ex have in the system in order to start inter interacting with that because there are several other aspects which makes a end user or a target audience to understand it. For an example, if I'm talking about Facebook, it may sound user friendly to everyone, but when it comes to LinkedIn, why do only professionals prefer to make use of it? Is that we are talking about the target audience of LinkedIn is only professional people? Yes, because we look forward to first understand what is our target audience and what kind of interaction, what kind of background, what kind of knowledge they have. And based on that, we try creating our product to meet their expectations and understanding as well. For an example, when you interact with any banking application, you would find terminologies and the wordings used quite relevant to them. But that's just not limited to language because language is one of the attribute which talks about user friendliness. Now it is important to understand why users might have difficulty using the system or do not have a positive user experience that would lead into a knowledge base creation to help you build better user friendly products for those intended target audience. Now to gain this understanding it is first necessary to appreciate that the term user may apply to a wide range of different types of personas which are user profile ranging from IT experts to children to people with disabilities as well. And that's where the user friendliness is measured in three different parameters or three different attributes. The different aspects which we generally consider is usability, user experience, what people have while working on your product and accessibility as well. So in this tutorial, we'll be talking about what is usability evaluation and user experience whereas accessibility will be discussed in our next tutorial. To get started with the usability evaluation, the very first parameter is usability itself, that what exactly usability is all about and on what factors we can determine whether the product will be user friendly to the end users or not. Now again, do not forget that in order to measure the usability parameters and usability perspectives, you need to first identify your target audience. It's not necessary your product is being built for every single user across the world. Sometimes your product is limited to a target audience itself. For example, if I'm making a banking application, I'm only talking about the bankers who are working with the bank. When I'm talking about a student-based application like result page or people who are going to see the scorecard on the system, then I'm talking about students and their mindset and their psychology to learn, understand and start using those systems. So I don't prefer to build them so complicated with a very extraordinary English language which may confuse them or find them difficult to apply or complete an application form. 
Now, usability testing generally targets software defects that impacts a user's ability to perform certain tasks via the user interface. Such defects may affect the user's ability to achieve their goals effectively or efficiently or with satisfaction. Now, these are the three major attributes which you may talk about the user friendliness altogether. Now, usability problems can also lead to confusion, error, delay, or outright failure to complete some task on the part of the user. So, user will be completely blocked and may not be able to perform the intended task and may look forward to adapt another tool or another application which they find it as better than the one which you are publishing to them. The following are the individual sub-characteristics in order to deep dive and understand what exactly makes usability complete. Now, usability also includes appropriateness recognizability, which is in simple term called as understandability. Now, attribute, this is an attribute of the software that affects the effort required by the user to recognize the logical concepts and its applicability. At any point of time, an application is pretty simple designed to make use of different activities or learn them in terms of like understand how to use it. So the language being used, the options and graphics being used contributes to these aspects which let an end user understand the product before start using them. Looking at several aspects, the field names, the labels, etc. will make the user understand that what exactly the product is all about and further starts interacting with it. Whereas the other one is learnability. This attribute of the software is that it affects the users required by the user to learn the application. Now learning is another aspect that can you understand and follow this to perform a task on the application. It's not necessary that just because you understand what the system is all about, you can even perform any kind of activity. So learnability is more about the effort required to learn the application. That means there are different actions, there are different parameters which needs to be performed. For example, anyone can shop on the e-commerce website. And that's very simple to understand because you know you have to browse the products, you have to select a product, add to the cart, or click on buy now to exit or add to cart to continue shopping and then check out all together at once. Now learnability makes you understand by these kind of phenomenal terms in terms of that add to cart always means that you are just adding to the cart but not checking out. But buy now button will take you to the checkout page where you can just check out and make the payment and exit the application. On the other hand, operability is an attribute of the software that affects the effort required by the user to conduct tasks effectively and efficiently. It's that simple that I can understand how does an ATM software works. I know how to withdraw money from the ATM. That means I have learned by following the instructions to withdraw money, but can I actually perform that action? Operating it efficiently without any mistakes that means the error messages are the one, information messages and warning messages are the one which help you perform a task more efficiently and effectively, which one way prevents you to perform any error, or in case you perform an error, the message further guides you how to overcome that and continue completing your process. The operability is just not about performing a task, it's more about performing a task more efficiently and effectively by reducing your anomalies. On the other hand, the user interface as aesthetics, which is attractiveness, invites or it is the usual visual attributes of the software which are appreciated by the user. There are certain aspects of any application, that is the background color, the hovering text, the font size, the font color, which acts as an attractiveness feature or attribute of the system, which lets people stay on your application for some time for sure. Sometimes you don't find the applications so pleasing that you may not just start working on it just because of the background colors or maybe the font size which are difficult to read and you may opt out of those applications. So we may have to take care of these attributes as well that how do you let your end user understand about the application at the same time giving them the attractiveness, attractiveness options to interact uh, with the system. 
And finally, the user error protection, which is like degree to which a system protects users against making errors. So here completely it is all about the various introduction messages, instructions before performing a task, or even information messages at the beginning of each and every field could act as a supporting option where the team can look forward or end user can look forward to learn the product or you know, understand the instructions before interacting with the system and doing the necessary work. Adding on to the next parameter, which is the user experience, and that user experience is all about the experience a user holds on your system. To add more about this particular understanding, the user experience is generally evaluation of the addresses and the whole user experience altogether. It's more about not just interacting for some particular purpose, but holding back your user for certain duration as well. That means people feel like coming back to your product now and then to use them. For example, I'm talking about the gaming interaction these days where generally you build some kind of games where people get addicted to it and they prefer spending time whenever they have some moment to start playing the game. Now this is where the user experience takes you back from uh, any other application to your application and people love spending time for example, when you talk about the reels today, there's nothing new about it. There's nothing, you know, which you really need as an information. You're not learning new updates from there, but you love watching people doing some dramatic scenes, etc., and you find it really enjoying. That's another thing. Similarly, when you talk about playing a game like Candy Crush, you don't really, you do ruin that this game is so childish that Generally, you used to play these games when you were a kid, but point is now you are getting attracted to those kind of, you know, branding, etc. And every other thing which they provide you with number of colors, the more, you know, the uh, kind of GIF, what they have, the kind of interaction they give it to you and the animations which they produce, you feel attracted towards that and you spend more and more time playing different levels and get addicted, right? And I don't have to talk about any other game like PUBG and uh, the Blue Whale, which certainly had a very, very bad impact. So, yes, exactly. But I must appreciate the people behind the screen making it to that level that people could really get so attracted to it that they followed every single instruction which was written on the screen. So typical factor which influences the user experience or a team uh, testing usability for a system should be taking into account as the brand image. That means the user's trust in the manufacturer. When you just say it's an iPhone, then people don't ask questions and they say, yeah, we blindly know that we can just buy it. You don't really have to evaluate the phone or test the phone before purchasing it because that's the brand name. Second is interactive behavior that no matter what kind of product they release, you know what kind of interactions that are going to give you to and uh, you don't find any challenges any kind of uh, problems using those product so it's going to be a wonderful experience using that product and the helpfulness of the test object including the help system support and training what kind of guided tour do you get uh, when you install the app for the first time in case you get stuck do you have a wonderful support system available could have could be a, a kind of faq or maybe even a user manual uh, right here digitally available to you to quickly resolve your issue or troubleshoot your problems yourself. Or if in case you don't find your issues there, how fast you reach out to a customer support through a chat or call to get the necessary you know, support possible to overcome those challenges. Now this is where the user experience matters. So they stick to your product and stay back with you for a longer duration, which also includes a part of user friendliness. And people say that, oh God, this is another and wonderful product which we can recommend to others and help them also use the same. So putting it all together, usability is all about building up the user experience, user friendliness from the functionalities and many other things which the system may have at any point of time to help the audience interact with it, work on it, and recommend it to others people. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. 
Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.